<laughs> exactly a year ago, Kamisato Ayaka did finally arrive in Genshin. And today, I want to tell you my story, why I like her so much. It might sound weird, but she really does mean a lot to me. I never would have started Genshin when my friend didn't start to play it. I was just surprised that from all people he would start off playing Genshin. It got me curious. I wasn't the biggest fan of we just put mostly girl characters in it and make it a gacha type of games. But it turned out to be better than I thought. The open world aspect was amazing and the combat with elements, that the elements have reactions when they interacted with each other, was for me a cool feature. But I don't know how it is for you, especially in those type of games where you can choose between multiple characters. I need that one character that I can resonate to, which becomes like the main character of the story, that I can fully enjoy the game. Otherwise, I probably lose soon interest in the game. There weren't many characters that resonated with my playstyle. I thought Keqing is cool. I wasn't that fond of her design, which was the case with most of the characters. But her Electro Sword combo and gameplay made me like her. In the early beginnings, my friend told me to pull for Wenti, because he was OP and Fischl was also in there. And I was like, hell nah, I don't prefer either of them. But I still decided to pull, mainly to try to get Keqing. Normally, I'm always careful, especially because of my hoarder playstyle, but I didn't care. I thought I'd probably quit soon, and it couldn't be that bad, right? So, I pulled on that banner, after the 6th temple, I stopped. I was just devastated that I didn't get a 5 star. Also because at the time I just cared about one or two characters, that my expectations were set too high. But still, to me, 60 wishes were a lot, especially by playing the game for about 2 or 3 weeks now. I realized how hard it's gonna be with time to get some wishes going. From there on, I just saved up. After one or two weeks passing, since I pulled on the banner, I lost slowly interest in Genshin, but I was still playing mainly because of my friend. A couple of days later, I discovered on YouTube a video. I looked at the thumbnail. It was some beta leaks about upcoming characters. So I watched it. And that was my first contact with Kamisato Ayaka. My mouth was wide open after I witnessed what I saw. I wasn't expecting such a character from this game at all. At the time, I didn't get that there will be in the future a region that is based in Japan. I didn't expect at all to see a samurai looking like character in this game. For me, she just stood out from all the other characters. The way she wields her sword like a katana, her quick and swift movements, her very expressive normal attacks, in a powerful and elegant way, her gorgeous burst animation. Overall, her gameplay was just so cool. I also didn't expect that her Japanese voice actor is going to be Saori Hayami. My favorite voice that she played at the time was Shinobu Kocho, literally my favorite from Demon Slayer that encouraged me even more. A funny and weird coincidence that she was going to voice Ayaka too. Just from design and gameplay, this character's aura screamed, this is something for you, Revolver. That's when I decided that I must save up my Primo Gems for Ayaka and that she will become my main. From there on, I got much more interested in Genshin. I think it is probably for a lot of us like that. 
that we always need a certain type of element, which clicks in us, to get more interested in something. And for me, Ayaka was that element. At first, I was just saving up for a guarantee for her, but later, with time flying by, it became like a challenge. Just the thought about how cool it would be that Ayaka will be my first great up 5 star character was exciting for me. Days went by, two or three months before Inazuma, my friend stopped playing Genshin. When I wanted to talk about Genshin, I didn't have anyone with who I can share my passion with. But I continued to play. I was at this point so determined to get Ayaka, even if a new character would come out that I liked more than her, which was very unlikely at the time. Time passed, and the day finally came. Ayaka got officially revealed. I was so overjoyed. Finally, after waiting for so long, my time has come. At that moment, I just wanted to share my excitement, but there weren't people that I could share this with. And then, I came to the idea, hey, why don't I share my journey on YouTube? The idea came after watching a Genshin related video. So I did that. And that is when my YouTube adventure began, as F2P Ayaka at that time. Through Ayaka, I discovered my hidden passion for creating videos. Even when I wasn't that good at it, I enjoyed it a lot. The days waiting for her became fun. And then, Kamisato Ayaka was finally here. All the saving up for this moment. It was so magical. To reach a goal after working towards it for such a long time. On that day, I was really done and tired, that I went after pulling for Ayaka to bed. After waking up, I thought everything that happened until now was a dream. I sat down on my chair, turned on my PC, logged into Genshin, and then, I saw Ayaka on my screen. I realized, everything until now, everything I worked up to, till this moment, really happened. Finally able to play her, and experiencing her gameplay, it was kind of surreal. But now, it was the real test, if I going to really like her or not. I could finally learn more about this character, what she is about. Until then, I was only able to see her design and gameplay. When you see Ayaka for the first time, I think mainly she is seen as a pretty, aesthetically good-looking character. I guess. But I didn't see her fully that way. For me, she especially screened pride and respect. More like a samurai, which resonated with me much more than her being seen as a graceful princess, which I, at the time, didn't really care about. I was a bit scared. I thought that her character might be not that good, that I might not like it at all. Because character is very important for me, at times even more than design and gameplay. My outlook on her, how I saw her first, and how I look at her now, it was a complete 360. How she behaves as a character, with her mannerism and how she expresses certain things, it reminds me a bit of Lilia. Lilia is a very curious girl and wants to try to understand things. She is open to trying to go out of her boundaries, even though she struggles at times with it, to get new experiences and to reach a new view out of it. In a certain way, I can relate that back to Ayaka. Ayaka is a very polite and understanding person that is open to trying to understand the views of other people. Instead of judging, she tries to relate and recognizes why a person feels a certain way. That shows me how mature Ayaka is and that she isn't naive. But also, 
what a kind and empathizing soul she is. Which suits her title as the Shirazaki Himegimi. I mean, that's one of the reasons why she gained the trust of the common folk. Learning more about Ayaka, she had something really fascinating about her. The same way how I felt about the character for the longest time. Yusei Fudo. When you just look at the surface of these characters, they seem like they are perfect and can do anything. But to me, there is much more to them. A very beautiful side to them, that makes me love them so much. It's easy to call someone perfect, if we just see them in their strong points. In that case, a lot of us can be seen as perfect. The past that they had to overcome is an important part, what made them become the person that they are today. Ayaka. Her family cares and give her a lot of affection. Ayaka having a great love towards her family and especially her mother, which she looked up to and was a role model for her. Losing her parents at a young age, this leads her older brother and Ayaka to take on the burden of the Kamisato clan, especially Ayato, the older brother that loves his younger sister dear, to take on most of the responsibility as the Yashiro commissioner. Ayaka realizes what a big burden her older brother must weigh, trying to become like her role model for that great love she has towards her mother having to grow up as fast as possible, to take a share of that burden of her older brother, for the love for her remaining family and her loving parents that she lost. Yusei, losing his parents as an infant due to an power plant accident, growing up in a slum with his friends that also lost their families due to that accident. Treated as useless nobody from the wealthy, common society. At the time, knowing that his father was the one responsible for the accident, being the son of the one that leads to the loss of his friends' families. His friends still meeting him with a smile on their face. Still caring, respecting and loving their dear friend. Even though some of them might know, that he is the son of the person who led to the loss of their families. Due to the love of his friends, he faces them with even greater care, respect and love in his way, and does his best to create hope for his friends, in a place where everything seems hopeless. Both overcome a certain part of their past, but their past also formed them. There was always something fascinating about Yusei's character to me, which took me a while to realize. And that's why I was also fascinated by Ayaka's character. In a way, I could relate to them. The love which they received, and the way how they give back this love, which they care about so deeply, which is so engraved into their heart, blood and soul with their behavior, emotions and actions, makes them so fascinating to me. To me, it's like they're both walking in darkness, and the path its light shines upon are their selves. By accepting their past, they both overcome darkness, which turned them into the light itself. They shine so brightly that the darkness can't get past them, like a bright light of hope. The story and characters are very different from each other, but their relatability in certain aspects made me love her more. My favorite part about Ayaka's character is how pure she is. Her pureness is exactly what makes Ayaka, Ayaka. She had to take on the burden of the Kamisato clan and the people have given her the title as the Shirazagi Himegimi. But at the end of the day, Ayaka is just Ayaka. She can also find interest and joy in simple things, like reading a book, creating snacks, or having the desire to attend the festival. She is just an ordinary girl, like any other, who can also get hungry at nights 
and sneaks past the servants into the kitchen just to make some chaske while humming a little song and not the perfect picture of who everybody else sees in her. Even she has problems, which can be relatable to the normal person. She has it as difficult as everybody else. When Lumin or Ifer interacts with Ayaka, at times she seems very close. But that's exactly what makes Ayaka this ordinary girl. As someone that didn't really have friends of her age, she was overjoyed to see a really good friend in Lumin or Ifer, especially because they didn't see her as the Shirazaki Himegimi or as the eldest daughter of the Yashiro Commission, but instead just as Ayaka. She felt comfortable around them, where she could talk about things that she couldn't share with others. She always wanted that one friend with that she could talk about everything. She has an innocent way of thinking, this pureness which I was talking about. She thinks that's how friends are, that they can trust each other. Because she never had friends her age who wasn't evolved in their family matters, she got close to Lumine or Ether. When she feels about something strongly, she could share those emotions. She has just very pure intentions. But her pureness is exactly what makes Ayaka so special from the others and which made me like her character even more. Nowadays, I really see her as this beautiful and kind soul. Just looking at her, I can just feel all her goodwill and pureness, which makes her so wonderful. Even how I used to see her movements have changed. Her swift and cool movements look like as she would perform a dance with her blade or theatrical play. Her character awaked emotions in me and touched me, pretty much like Yusei which did that a long time ago. This is genuinely a big and important part of why I like her so much, more than from her design and gameplay. But there is also another part that plays a big role. Back to YouTube. There were a lot of people that shared the same passion or even more than me, which leads all towards this one character. It motivated me to make a Discord server, which was completely out of my comfort zone. Through that, I was able to meet a lot of amazing people. They all helped me out a lot, to set up the server and to get to know Discord. One or two weeks later, after making the Discord server, I felt a bit overwhelmed by life. There was just a lot going on at the same time, and at times I didn't feel comfortable and felt not confident about my videos. That pressure was at times too much to handle for me. I made unfrequently videos because of my lack of self-confidence and the doubts that I had but also my real-life environment. Because of the unclear state I was in, I slowly burned out creating videos. And then, I didn't make any videos at all. I neglected Discord and, after playing Genshin since the day I started, pretty much daily, I stopped playing for some days. During and a bit before that time, I always fought back. Something was missing in my life. It bothered me the entire time. But I felt like I can't go back. I was in a bad emotional spot at the time. I lost motivation for a lot of stuff. That's also why I didn't feel like playing Genshin anymore. After a couple of days, for some reason, I decided to log in again. I was having a lot of fun playing together with Ayaka. I remembered how much I liked this character and how fun this game can be. For 20 minutes straight, I was just watching Ayaka on my screen, doing her idol animations. I was reflecting back. In that moment, I gained all my motivation back. I started to plan my next video again. 
created it and uploaded it. I put all my heart and soul into that video. I started to play actively again. I wanted to get back to the Discord server. I was afraid of it. But I really wanted to start over again. A person made it easier for me to get back to the server. And I'm grateful for this person. Since that day, I connected with them much more. I'm glad that I returned there. And I'm happy that I made the server. Before I started even with Genshin, I was still recovering from stuff that happened in life. On the day, when I looked at Ayaka straight for 20 minutes, I got reminded of all the good memories that this character gave to me, of all the fun stuff that happened during the saving for Ayaka, how I started to make videos because of this character, how I like her as a character and her relatability, everything that I built up and what I achieved until now, how I got motivated to go even out of my boundaries, but most importantly, the bonds that were created. I didn't want to give that up. I refused to go back into that state, which I used to be in. That day, I realized why I love Ayaka so much. She is like a motivational spot for me. She is a place where I can go back and get reminded of all the joy and bonds that she brought me, and all the new joy and bonds that I want to create. For some of you, she just might be a 3D model in a game. But for me, Kamisato Ayaka is very precious and important to me. Because of this character, I got interested in a type of game which I never would have imagined playing ever. Because of this character, I started to make videos on YouTube which I never would have thought, especially because of the type of person I am. Because of her, I found a character that I can look up to and that motivates me, in the same way as this character you say did. Because of this character, I gained a lot of motivations and desires that I didn't have for many years of my life. She is a light of hope for me. All the motivation that I have right now doesn't only come from Ayaka. These are my desires, dreams and goals. But Ayaka was an originator of that motivation that I have right now. That's also the reason why I changed my name F to be Ayaka. I don't want to personify myself as Ayaka. She is her own great character that I learned to know and love. I am my own individual, not Ayaka and not Revolver, but the Revolver that I want to become as wonderful and great beings as Ayaka and Revolver, Shin Revolver. She created some of the bonds that I have right now, and now it's up to me what I make with these bonds, with this motivation. At the start, I just found her cool and saved up for her, just for the challenge. But with time, she grew on me a lot. The last time Ayaka helped me out to get back, to walk my own path. This time, it was my time to show what path does she walk on. Kamisato Ayaka will always have a special place in my heart. Thank you Ayaka. I'm glad that I waited for you.